Good morning. Welcome to St. John this morning and uh, holiday weekend. It's good to see so many of you. You never know with a holiday, right? Um, but I'm glad you could come out this day and uh, keep the lights down and keep the windows shut because I think it's going to be hotter outside than it is in here. Um, and also we're having a little bit of an issue with lighting the candles. So while they're working on that, I think we can go ahead and begin with our hymn of invocation. Hymn 533, Jesus Has Come and Brings Pleasure. We stand. We prepare for the divine service with confession and absolution, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. O God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Do not forget the clamor of your foes. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, good will toward man. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you have promised, make us love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 13th Sunday after Trinity is from 2 Chronicles chapter 28. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there whose name was Oded. And he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria and said to them, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand but you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? Now hear me and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshillamoth, and Jehezekiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai stood up against those who were coming from the war and said to them, You shall not bring the captives in here, for you propose to bring upon us guilt against the Lord in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is already great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives, and with the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them. And carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. 
Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through all mourning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, so righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in in spirit there is no deceit. The Epistles from Galatians, chapter 3. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. 
For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
You may be seated. The hymn of the day today is from the electronic edition of the hymnal, some additional hymns that didn't make it. Um, an excellent hymn, I Trust, O Christ, in You Alone. It's printed on a white insert, so you'll have to sort through all the inserts to find it. Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have, have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are given as baptized Christians to see the entire world as it really is. But this sight does not come to you by your physical eyes. 
but through God's word and spirit-given faith. Your physical eyes actually deceive you because they see only as your flesh and blood can know. So you look and you see a damned sinner or a self-righteous saint, whether you look at yourself or around at your neighbor. But neither vision is the truth, or at least nothing more than, at best, the half-truth. If you see as the flesh sees, you will only see corruption. If you look with eyes towards justice and law, you will despair for today and tomorrow. Or as one of you asked before church that we pray for our country. Again, looking with our eyes, it seems there is no hope. And if you keep looking, even further afield, you will see only a damnable world full of murder, adultery, unchastity, theft, slander, libel, greed, and worse. With our eyes, it appears that every, everything and everyone is under demonic sway, corrupt and corrupting. Even churches offer no clarity of purpose or future any way out, a different vision. But again, you are given as baptized Christians to see the entire world as it actually is. The sight does not come through your physical eyes, but through God's word and spirit-given faith. When you look around with eyes of faith, enlightened by the gospel, instead you see sinners, yes, but sinners for whom Christ died. You see neighbors whom Jesus gave you to love with his love. You see a world desperately needing Christ's blood-bought grace, mercy, and peace. Your physical eyes cannot see this. Only eyes lit up by the gospel of Jesus can. And so it seems these eyes are opposed to one another. And of course you know that the flesh is opposed to the spirit. You will always see things in two ways. First, according to the law, which shows you and your neighbor's sin and is hopeless, despairing. And also then, with eyes of faith, according to the gospel, which sees your sins forgiven and forgiving your neighbor's sins. It doesn't take a word from God to see all the wrongdoing and corruption and even death that's in ourselves and in our neighbor. Just an honest reflection sees that. We have the law written on our hearts and it reveals that truth, the truth of the law, just fine. But even then, we have a kind of adaptive blindness to our own sin and then a hypersensitive vision to our neighbor's faults. We're good at avoiding our own guilt and heaping shame upon our neighbor. But God won't have it because that's not the truth. Even though the law is written on our hearts, we still deceive ourselves, and that truth is not in us. So, God spoke the law in all its severity on Sinai, so that neither you nor your neighbor have any excuse. When the law of God speaks, sin increases beyond measure, so that all are declared captive, enslaved, guilty. And if that were the last word then we'd be just like the man in the ditch, stripped naked, robbed of anything in what we could trust, and left for dead. Exactly probably what we deserved. The sad truth is that we and everyone else in that mass grave deserve to be there. God has revealed this truth so that you do not deceive yourself, so that you know what is really real, that you see yourselves truthfully according to the flesh, Sinners without a hope or prayer. But God didn't stop speaking. Indeed, long before Sinai, before that law in its full severity was spoken, he spoke a word of promise. The promised seed who would crush the serpent's head. The seed in whom all the nations of the earth would be blessed. The seed in whose fellow brothers and sisters would be more numerous than the stars of heaven and the sand on the shore. That word of promise predates even the foundation of the world. That promise overcomes what your flesh sees, what your physical eyes can see, or even what God's law has revealed. 
The gospel promise of Christ crucified for forgiveness is the only answer for the desperate sinner whose conscience is tormented, for a damnable world full of murder, adultery, unchastity, theft, slander, libel, greed, corruption, and worse. Because where there is forgiveness, there is life and salvation. Jesus is at work to care for all of you. Yes, your soul with forgiveness, but your body too. He promises to never leave you or forsake you, so that nothing, not sins or death or devils, can tear you away from his gracious love. And this perfect love that casts out fear is given to you as a gift, not by merit, and there is no worthiness needed, because everything for life and salvation is freely and graciously given to you and to all who believe. So your baptized eyes see this as what is real. You don't just see as mere physical eyes see. So even today you see upon, or the Lamb of God upon his altar throne, who has come to give his body and blood to you. You see Jesus standing in your midst, forgiving your sins. Your baptized eyes see Jesus washing you with water, absolving and cleansing. These eyes see Jesus in the pulpit, proclaiming his word, who alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And when your eyes now see that, then you will also see everything and everyone around you differently. You see, brothers and sisters, all reborn and adopted by water and the word. Just look around, that's who's with you today. You see a family rooted and grounded in Christ's love. You see your fellow kin, who are yours to love and care for, not by human blood, but by divine promise. You see a family gathering of dysfunctional sinners, yes, but living together by the atoning blood of Christ. As far as Jesus is concerned, we were all once rebels and his enemy, but now he has made us his friends and brothers by his grace, by dying to redeem us. That's here, but if you continue to look even farther afield, you'll see even more with these eyes of faith. You'll see neighbors, be they friends or foes, by flesh, whom Jesus died for and has given to be recipients of his grace, mercy, peace, hope, life, salvation, and resurrection, too. There's no distinction or judgment that you can ever let get in the way of Christ Jesus using you as instruments of his love. Again, be your neighbor, friend, or foe. That could be the annoying neighbor next door whose every action gets on your nerve. Forgive, love, and be patient and gracious with him, just as Jesus is with you. And the possibilities to love are as numerous as there are sinners and a sinful world. You have a few inserts as well as some other bulletin announcements of those within our congregation and those nearby and even those far afield who need your love and care. Love begins with prayer because all true prayer is grounded in God's word, revealing and forgiving sin. And then from there, you see the world differently, with love. Your neighbor could be a coworker who is impossible to work with and doesn't really even deserve the job. Forgive her without limit, with undeserved charity. Your neighbor could be Russian aggressors or Ukrainian oligarchs. Both sides, so to speak, need Jesus to bring peace, a lasting peace that only forgiveness of sins can give. Your neighbor could be those incarcerated, maybe even January 6th insurrectionists who are rotting in jail with no due process or speedy trial, with exaggerated charges and are neglected and dejected. These fellow citizens are your neighbors who need loving care, advocacy, money, letters to Congress, or even just care packages for their family and children. However you feel about what they did doesn't even matter, any more than it mattered for the Samaritan who found the man in the ditch. What the courts rule is even irrelevant. They and their families need absolution and love. Just to name a few, Examples. These opportunities are endless. 
I'm sure you've probably thought of others who your conscience has pricked, who need your love too already. But of course you ask, how could we love them all? How could we possibly do that? There must be some limit, some constraint. Who is my neighbor? You think that no one has the time or the resources or facilities or patience or even the means to do even a little for all those in need, never mind everything they need. You can't even see how that's possible. How could it be possible that you could love in such a way, freeless, free and boundless? But of course, that makes you just like the lawyer that came to Jesus, who can think only according to the law, only as his eyes can see. And there you are, thinking according to your flesh again. It's right at hand, always ready to tempt, setting limits on, on love and making excuses, well, really so you could just be negligent. But why? You have eyes of faith. You've been baptized. You know that the Lord always provides love abounding. So look around and see with eyes of faith. You have a cup overflowing with grace and mercy. You have a spring of waters that never dries up. You have a tree whose fruit is always in season. You have Jesus. Your Jesus, whose compassion for you and for those he has given you to love never ceases and never runs out. And so today, Jesus is here first to care for you, to bind up your wounds, to heal you of your sin and rebellion, to carry you on his shoulders here into his holy inn, and to care for you. His mercies never cease, thanks be to God. And then you won't cease to love either. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you have seen. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with the high free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you served your people of old through priest and Levite, who of themselves could never heal the curse of the law. Give us Christ Jesus, the true priest, who with his oil and wine is able to fully heal all our wounds, forgive all sins, and bring us to eternal rest. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, you gave the Old Covenant through angels to train Israel in your law. Bless the ministers of your New Covenant to proclaim forgiveness, life, and salvation to all nations in the stead and by the command of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O righteous Lord, by our wickedness we merit many of the evils that befall us. Nevertheless, cut short your wrath, make room for repentance, and forgive us for the sake of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, Father of us all, 
Turn the hearts of Christian brother to brother, that those who fall into sin would be brought to repentance and not be rebuked beyond measure, but rather be restored to the communion of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, preserve your gift of marriage against the ravages of sin, the schemes of the devil, and the raging of the world. Bless the couples and families of our congregation, especially that of Brandon and Valerie, Russ and Amy, Rachel and family, Garrett and Jenny, Ron and Janet, and Scarlett. Strengthen them all in love and care for one another, and establish them on the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord and King, you appoint our earthly rulers to urge the good and punish the wicked. Grant both justice and restraint in their punishments, that goodness and grace may be established in our land. Restrain all evildoers, even those within our government, that we would be able to preach the gospel in integrity, without oppression. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, whenever or wherever the wicked strip and wound, and wherever the devil seeks our fall, you meet us with healing and grace to endure. We ask you to soothe and lift up all in need, especially Pam, Joe, Kelsey, Dennis, Naomi, Christopher, Marcy, and Brad, Eileen, Ron, Doug, Donna, Jim, Pat, Wendell, Darlene, and District President Willie. Carry them to find rest in you and you only. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, as Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your son's cross, his body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith that in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mm -hmm. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right. So to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ our Lord who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, O Holy, O Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, O 
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ,
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We'll continue with the thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth for now heaven. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for the heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We sing our hymn to depart. Well, we're not departing quite yet, but that's okay. Our closing hymn, Jesus, Thy Boundless Love to Me, hymn 683.
All right, Don, you can come on forward so you're ready to go. Uh, just a few announcements before we begin. There's more than what's, on the, what's up on the screen. So uh, I'll turn to whatever color it is today. Go uh, gray. Voters Assembly in a few seconds. Picnic Sunday is next Sunday. We need sign up. We need uh, the men are grilling. We need some volunteers there. There's other set up, tear down, all of that, as well as donations. So that's on the visitor table out back. So sign up today for that. Uh, we have security committee meeting the 11th. So that's a week from Monday. Okay, so you see the other meetings there. Uh, there's Jenny, good. I just going to invite you up here too. Uh, as far as uh, opportunities to love your neighbor, you had a specific, couple specific ones in the service folder. Of course, like I said, you probably could think of all sorts of opportunities just off the top of your head, more than you can count. But some specific ones are the fundraiser for Brad Yench, who is in need of transplant, so you'll note that. Lots of opportunity there. Also, Wendell, who's having, um, was it stem cell transplant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he, has a, he went through chemo, blood cancer of a sort, and then... Uh, many opportunities there to care uh, for their needs as well. Uh, and uh, also our mission of the month. It's a new month, so this month we're so, they're supporting uh, the Federwitzes and all of their Bible translating work. So um, use your mission envelopes. If you have your envelopes, use that. Or you can just note it on the memo. That's fine as well. And there's a direct link to support LBT, Lutheran Bible Translators, in the service folder. All right. We need a brief voters' assembly because it is the voters' responsibility to approve and reject contracts, so uh, they need to present that to you. So 